Okay, then uh, the time is uh, passed with uh, two minutes over nine. Uh, on behalf of the Norwegian and Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce, as well as the British Chamber of Commerce, it's a great honor to welcome you all to the, today's event with the Minister of uh, Transport and Communication, Mr. Marius Skodis. Uh, my name is Bjarne Müller and I'm your host for this event. I'm a Norwegian citizen living here in Lithuania for five years. And I'm also a board member of the Norwegian Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce. Before we uh, get started, I have some practical information. This meeting is uh, recorded and uh, this will be shared on the Norwegian Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce Facebook page and the British uh, Chamber user channel afterwards. For those of you who will have some questions to the minister, it's possible already, already now to, uh, to use the chat room to, to raise the questions you would like to ask the minister, and I will read them up after the presentation. So uh, without further um, information, I would like to move forward uh, to today's uh, main speaker. So the stage is your minister of transport, Mr. Marius Skodis. So thank you very much. If you allow me, I will share several slides. And since I have quite a long presentation, I would like to stop in the middle and you know to have the remaining time for the Q&A session and discussion on specific topics that you would be most interested in. Otherwise, I will spend an entire hour for presenting what we are thinking about uh, transport and communication sector and so on, and we won't have any, any time for questions. So I will share my screen. I think you should should see now everything. Could yes, you confirm? Sure. Yeah, so I would like to start from what we are doing at the ministry. And we were trying uh, to summarize everything, all our activities in two words. In English, and since it's translation from Lithuanian, in Lithuanian, it would be lies where you did. In English, it would mean freedom to move. So everything what we are doing is to increase choices, personal choices, how to move. Whether to use personal cars or public transport or bicycles or any other mean of transport within the country or outside the country. And then you basically have to ask the question. So where are we starting in order to have more freedom to move? And here we'd like to show you several numbers, what we have in Lithuania. In Lithuania in general, citizens, inhabitants in general, spend a lot for transport services. We are Lithuanians basically spend more than the EU average and are among the most spending countries. 16% of personal expenses are for transport, while in the EU the average is around 13%. So Lithuanians spend a lot for transport service. At the same time, we have a huge car park for a number of reasons. When you don't have too many choices to use public transport. What you are doing? You're using your personal car. So here we have numbers from the European Commission that 90% of population uses a car for internal traveling. Basically, if you calculate all the internal journeys within Lithuania, you use your personal car for a number of reasons. In the EU, the EU average is lower around 83%. Europeans usually use more trains and so on in comparison to Lithuanians. At the same time, according to the latest polls that we have, they say that around 40% of families in Lithuania have 
at least two cars. There are families that have more. And we have a similar a simple result that 60% of all green, greenhouse gas emissions are from, from the transport sector in Lithuania. At the same time, some time ago, the European Commission raised a certain goal and it was agreed that by 2020, all citizens within the European Union should have access to fixed internet uh, connection of at least 30 megabits per second. And in Lithuania, we still have around 70%. So still, we need to do a lot. So this is the situation where we are starting from. And in order to offer more freedom to choose how to travel, which sector to work in and so on, basically you need to address these challenges. Now the question is what financial resources besides regulatory actions we have in order to offer more jobs. So we calculated that over the current political cycle, the Ministry of, of Transport and Communications are going to invest around 3 billion euros into the sector. If we add also our companies, state-owned enterprises, they are going to invest around one additional billion in the sector. So in total, it would be 4 billion where the resources are coming from. So basically 60%, the major, major part are from the so-called road maintenance and development program. This is, we are calculating the average that Lithuania spends for roads, state-owned roads, and at the same time, municipal roads. So in total, how much we spent, so when you are spending around 60% of all your resources you know, to roads, it's especially important to allocate resources in the most efficient way in order to get the best result. At the same time, we are discussing a lot, and I think you already had a presentation from my colleague, Minister of Finance, who probably presented uh, uh, what are we going to invest from the so-called recover and resilience facility. I think so from, from the EU resources. So around 10% of our investments are going to come from additional EU resources. Then traditional EU funds, we are going to have much more in our sector a simple reason we are calculated around half of, of, of the EU financial perspective because until 24, we are going to invest half. And then we will move, we will, the next government will move further. Then climate change program, which is coordinated by the Minister of Environment, but we are using uh, money to, to promote electric mobility and so on. And then some EU resources, additional resources, the so-called Connecting Europe facility, which we're using to finance the Rail Baltica project, the largest infrastructure project in the Baltic region over the past 100 years. Fast railroad connect that, which will connect by the same tracks the European standard, West European standard tracks to the to the Western Western Europe by 26. So these are the funding. And then the question is what we would like to achieve. And we decided to focus on three very concrete, but at the same time broad areas. And these are the first one is convenient connections because the Ministry of Transport and Communication is about connectivity. In order to have more freedom to move, you need to have good connections within the country and with neighboring and other countries all around the world. The second area is eco-friendly environment or friendly environment in general. 
because it's not only about less impact on environments, but it's also about accessibility for people with special needs and so on. And then the third option, which we are trying to highlight within the ministry a lot is high returns. We would like that the transport sector would be seen as a high value added sector. And if you worked there, you would know that you could, could get high returns because you are creating high value add. So this is the third, the third area. And now I will move to several, several numbers that we would like to achieve, and then we will be able to move to, uh, to the Q&A session in order to, to find out about concrete projects that you would be more, most interested in. So now regarding convenient connections, we would like to stress what we have in cities. And these are the numbers that we would like to change. Now, 20 larger cities in Lithuania have their own smart mobility plans, the so-called smart mobility plans. And we calculated what we would like to achieve by 2030. Because in the transport sector, regrettably, you can't achieve a lot in one year because it takes time to build infrastructure, to change habits of people, and so on. So within the cities, and these are the averages. So if you look at Vilnius, the numbers would be a little bit different. Within the cities, around 55% of people are traveling by cars. And because of that, you have traffic jams and so on. In some cases, it's impossible to, to use public transport if you have kids and you are working in one part of the city and you need to, to bring them to kindergarten, then to take them after your work. Basically, with public transport, it would be extremely difficult. It's possible in some cases, but but it's some some it's it's really difficult, and for that people for that reason people are using cars, and it's not about uh, it's basically whether the public transport is convenient or not. So we would like to decrease the number of trips that people are taking with their personal cars, but car sharing services, public transport, other means of transportation in general. This is one of our main goals. So we would like to see around 40% of trips by cars within cities by 2030. So how we are going to achieve this? We would need to increase the number of people using public transport by around 5%. And it's not a lot. If public transport became more convenient, I think we would switch to it. Then we are going to invest a lot into bike lanes. And this is something, and in Lithuania, uh, we have two, two, two different words. Dvira uh, Chutakas, it's bicycle path or something. But we would like to talk about, to translate from Lithuanian about trasos, it's about routes. You don't need to, you know, to have a line connecting point A and point B, because if you reach point B and there is no bike lane further, you won't be using it. So this is what we would like to change within cities and outside the country. For instance, uh, in four years, I think in a shorter period, what we are going to have is to have a bellowed bicycle lane connecting Nida and Latvian border. Now we have a lane, but it's with uh, certain <laughs> breaking points. So we have, uh, we would like to have entire routes. So it's also about, about tourism. And we are thinking about setting other routes, connecting Vilnius and Trakai, for instance, or along certain rivers and so on. So it's not only about, about smart mobility within cities, but also within the country. And we are going to invest, to invest substantial amounts of 
EU funding and basic resources in order to, to promote the way of life that we have in Benelux countries, in some Scandinavian countries, countries and so on. And also we have better bike lanes and basically paths people would be, would be traveling more by foot too, which is really uh, an unused opportunity in, in our, our larger cities. So these things are about connections. Then if we are talking about eco-friendly environments. So as I mentioned, our car park is very old from 15 to 17 years on average. 70% uh, of our cars are using diesel fuel. It's, it's really a lot. At the same time, we have a lot of cars. And if we want to adapt to the goals of the European Union, which we are supporting and which we agreed with, basically the impact of our transport sector will be very large. And here we are thinking about a lot of, a lot of actions that needs to be done from promoting electric mobility. So for instance, we are going to use the European Recovery and Resilience Facility, the resources there to increase the number of public charging uh, stations for your electric electric vehicles 15 times by 24. It's only public. At the same time, so from around 400 at the moment to more than 5,000 in four years. At the same time, we have a number that we need to increase the number of private charging stations to 60,000 around around 60,000. So it's really a lot. And we are talking, collaborating very closely with the Minister of Energy and Minister of Environment, how to move in a coordinated way and to ensure basically proper expansion. There are also a lot of, lot of goals related to electrification of our, of our trains, buying brand new ones, even with batteries that we would be able to travel to certain destinations without the need of electrific electric electrification of the entire route, for instance, and so on. And the third goal is about high returns. And these are numbers about telecommunications, but of course uh, we could use other numbers too. So in the beginning, I mentioned uh, that we still did not reach the coverage of 30 megabits internet connection. Now by 25, we would like to see 100 of households having an opportunity to access 100 megabits internet. At the same time, we need to ensure extremely fast internet, one gigabit per second to enterprises and institutions that need it. So these are not only private sector companies, but also schools within regions, public libraries, and so on. By 25, by 24, we would like to see the 5G network covering around 95% of our territory, including the main trans-European networks, meaning the main, the main roads, highways and also the rail baltica track and the last number is about export of transport services so lithuania is known for that there are a lot of challenges in the sector that needs to be dealt with at the national level and at the same time at the european level but we would like to build on that and to increase the export of transport services and this area is not only for road carriers, it's also about, about
about our air sector, how to increase the share of, for instance, MRO activities within, within the sector and to increase it even further. So I would like to stop here. This is a very broad coverage. And now we could, we could move to the Q&A session and it's probably more concrete things, larger projects, projects that we would like to implement. But in general, we are talking about more freedom to move and then focusing on three areas, connectivity, environment, and how to increase the returns from the sector. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Um, very interesting uh, figures and, uh, and presentation so far. Um, before I move on with a couple of questions, I would like to remind everyone to please raise your questions uh, through the chat box, and I will read them up. You was talking about that uh, the next years you will invest uh, more than 3 billion uh, euros in uh, the road sector or in, in the transport sector. And then most of this will be in the road sector. For me as a Norwegian, first time I, I drive it between uh, yeah, both uh, Riga and Panavesis where I'm living, but also between Kaunas and, and Panavesis, I was, uh, shocked about uh, the uh, huge amount of uh, trucks and trailers uh, driving on, on these roads. And uh, how to say, we have trailers also in Norway, but uh, the amount is uh, enormous, obviously because of the Via Baltic uh, road. So this, my questions to you is, what kind of concrete plans do you have for investment in, how to say, a motor road through Lithuania on the, the Via Baltica? Because there is so much trucks driving, uh, and uh, how to say, I, I have a suspicion that one of the reasons that there is traffic accidents is when personal cars need to, to pass those trucks. Um, so do you have some, some plans for uh, building motor road through Lithuania, like we have between Vilnius and Panavesis, for instance? A very, a very good question. So via Baltica track, is including in the so-called trans-European networks, network plan, which is agreed by the European Union. And according to the shared goals, we need to upgrade it to a highway, mm. meaning uh, two ways, one direction and two, uh, two lanes, another direction. We need to do this by 2030. So until 24, now we are focusing on, uh, on 40 kilometers connecting Mariampole and the Polish border, which is the most used, mm. used part, part of the road in Lithuania and probably the most, the most used, used road. So to increase the speed to 130 kilometers and uh, when we finish it, we will have around 140, 130 kilometer speed, including all the security features and so on, almost from Konas to the Polish border. Mm. And then we will move further north. We mm. need to agree with our, with our Latvian colleagues that uh, the highway would be of the same standard. So we are still thinking about, about uh, how wide it, it should be. So mm -hmm. until 2030, it will be a highway meeting all the standards of, I don't know, from Vilnius to Klaipeda and uh, all from, Vilnius, from Vilnius to Kmerge, the same, the same standard. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I would like to mention that there will be unavoidable certain changes within the sector. From the 1st of January, we need to implement the so-called e-tolling system, meaning that uh, the trucks or these kind of vehicles, including buses and so on, will need to pay for the kilometers that they travel. Mm. I think it will have impact on the sector unavoidably, and we are moving to this direction. This is about eco-friendly environment. 
and so on. And at the same time, especially near Panevejis, you will have an international train station, the Rail Baltica train station. We are now planning the network around Panevejis, how we are going, whether to move closer to the free economic zone where you are probably, probably working, or whether it should be further and so on. And with the rail of Baltica, it might happen that more cargo would move to trains, mm -hmm. to railways. And in general, this is also the goal of the European Union to move more cargo to trains, especially cargo that is traveling uh, more than 500 kilometers or 300 or 500 that we would be using trains. So we'll see. So upgrading the Via Baltica route that we have, because it's really, uh, it's really intensively used. At the same time, focus on railways and all the uh, incentives related to eco-friendly environment could also have an impact. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. And regarding uh, Real Baltic, as I understand, which is the biggest uh, infrastructure project uh, ever uh, in, in uh, this uh, region, what kind of, um, how to say, um, how to say, plan do the government have to ensure that this huge investment will actually be a success? We have in Norway the same ongoing discussion to, to build out the railway from south of Norway to north of Norway. And it's a huge investment and there is a big discussion. Uh, what about the, the return of the investment? Uh, so how to, uh, how to ensure that uh, this actually will be a, a payback on? For tourism, yes, uh, I see the point, but uh, how to say how to uh, to make sure that the, the goods will be trans uh, converted from from trucks and trailers to uh, to to the railway? What kind of initiatives do you take to uh, to make sure that that will be a success? I think it's very important for municipalities to use all the opportunities that we have. It's not only from the central government. Mm -hmm. From the point of view of, of where I am sitting, sitting at the moment, it, it's very important, for instance, to connect our airports with Rail Baltica. So now we are working on, on certain plans, how to connect Vilnius airport, since from Vilnius we will be going through Kaunas airport. So we need to have proper connection there. Then you will choose whether to travel to Panevejis with the railway station, or uh, to the western part of the country and to the, uh, to the Polish border. We, we will have a station in Mariampole, for instance. So it's very important for municipalities to use all the opportunities. And this is the reason why we are asking, for instance, Panevejis municipalities, so how you are imagining uh, the train station and the network there. Mm. Are you going to expand, uh, I don't know, the, the territories there, uh, are you going to, to foresee territories for industry there? What about markets? Uh, what about connectivity with the city? So it, it's really important for, for the municipalities to be involved. And for that reason, we are organizing constantly different presentations for society in general. At the same time, we are meeting at the moment different municipalities because we are moving through the planning process. So we will see. So everything is about con connectivity and also I would say intermodal networks about certain places where you could uh, could, uh, could transfer cargo you know, from trucks to railways, or you could arrive by car and use railways to travel further. Uh, so a lot of things are going on at the moment. Mm -hmm. At the same time, this is not only a project of Lithuania, but this is the project of the European Union, mm -hmm. entire European Union. So we are monitored very closely to use all the benefits because this is the interest of the European Union at the same time. And of course, we have a joint company of all the three Baltic countries. We are cooperating very closely with, with Polish colleagues. The goal, the ambitious goal that we have at the moment is to 
conclude, uh, to finish the project until the end of 26, in order to be able to travel. Now we are actually building tracks uh, connecting Kaunas and Latvia. Mm -hmm. We are already doing that. I'm not sure how our neighbors are moving. I'm sure that the Polish will, uh, will finish what they are planning until 27. So we need to finish until 26. And hopefully we will move in a coordinated, coordinated uh, way then. Thank you. You were speaking a little bit about Vilnius Airport. Um, for, for me, who is living in, in Panavesis and, and need to, to fly uh, abroad, uh, uh, most common is to use uh, Riga Airport due to connection, uh, connecting flights. Um, what, does, uh, what plans does the government have to do, uh, especially Vilnius, but as well as Kaunas and also Palanga Airport, more attractive for the airlines to start up with new routes uh, when, how to say, when the air industry is back in business, when the COVID is, is over? So, so what kind of uh, instruments uh, and actions are the government taking to, to ensure that it will be more connecting flights to, uh, to, to Europe? So first of all, regarding infrastructure, we are going to substantially expand Vilnius Airport by building a new departure terminal, which will be connecting with Rail Baltica, uh, railway, and so on. Uh, we'll see when we start the actual construction work, but hopefully by the end of the year, in order to be prepared to, uh, to provide services for around 6.5 million customers in Vilnius Airport because the capacity of our current Vilnius Airport that we have is around 3.5 million per year. And before the COVID, we managed to provide services to 5 million, but with a lot of challenges. And given the current uh, pandemic situation and so on, uh, uh, where you will have to have more spaces and so on. So basically we need to invest in, uh, mm -hmm. in expansion. But this is about mm -hmm. infrastructure. The second thing is about how to, to ensure the routes that our economy needs and our citizens need. And this is uh, the challenge that we are solving at the moment. Because we see if we move with the same means that we were working with before the crisis, the situation won't be transformed. And we need a transformation. So of course, uh, Air Baltic, Riga, they're moving quite fast. Polish are going to build a new airport uh, and so on. So there is a lot of competition. In Lithuania, we see that our, our strategy will be based on mm. tourism, on people coming to Lithuania, not on people, on Lithuanians traveling mm. abroad. Because in general, if you look at the statistics, Lithuanians travel a lot. So you can still, uh, there is still opportunity to increase the numbers, but it won't be a game changer. So basically, we need to focus on people who would like to travel to Lithuania. At the moment, we are working with consultants on creating a certain model for promoting flights. One of the ways we are assessing at the moment would be for our airports, which we are transforming from state enterprise into public uh, limited liability company, it would allow them to establish subsidiary companies. So we'll see whether the company will be their own or together with the state. We'll see to establish a certain company which will be uh, responsible for promoting flights. Mm -hmm. How it could work, uh, should use its capital to share risks with the private sector and at the same time to get returns. And in order to basically ensure rules that we need to have, 
to the main hubs in Europe, uh, to the main capitals, and so on. So by the end of the year, uh, we will hopefully have a very concrete plan with uh, all the calculations, because we have at the moment only uh, certain uh, initial numbers, and then we will move, mm. move further. But we are not going to establish our national airlines. Uh, oh. At least, my, in my my opinion, it's it's something about about the past. We need to look to the future and to new models. For sure. Um, I don't know if there is anyone who have further questions. But do you have more slides on your presentation, or um, you just take a break now, or you have the more slides before? I have a, this. These slides are around around concrete concrete projects. So I'm not sure whether you are really interested in them. If you are, I could show you something, but uh, but not necessarily. Yeah. Now, so far, we don't have any uh, further uh, questions. Uh, so I don't know if um, you would like to uh, to, sh to to show the last pages or um, yeah, it's it's up to you. So I could okay. I will show. So I am returning to the slides. So connectivity, friendly environment, and high returns, and some of the projects that we are planning at the moment. Is it working? So we already covered some of them. I would like to start from the bottom. Rail Baltica, I mentioned, to conclude the project by 26. But at the same time, we want to start planning for the European standard railway connecting Vilnius and Klaipeda this year. If we wanted to, to, to move to the next financial EU financial perspective started in 2028, 20, so basically all the planning needs to be done today. So this is about fast railway to Klaipeda to reach the sea from Vilnius or Panevisius, Kaunas or other, other cities. Now we have a lot of plans and there are free three major infrastructure projects related to roads. I mentioned about Via Baltica that we are focusing on, on, the, on the road near the Polish border. Uh, there is another, what I call shame of Lithuania, road connecting Vilnius and Utana, Moleta and Utana, which is which is really not of satisfactory standard. So we are going to upgrade it, to reconstruct it too. I mentioned about electric car charge points, which we are going to increase 15 times. And this is about public charging points, not, not about public. In the, in the private sector, it will, it will increase even more. Regarding the Vilnius airports, I mentioned about departure terminal and also about destination. So this is very important. Now we need to focus to return to the numbers that we had before the crisis. And before the crisis, we had around 92 destinations. So we need to return what we had and then to increase the number to 110. This is the number that we are planning. Uh, bike lanes and so on, 20% is a very conservative estimate because we are now working on, on, the, on the map of all bicycle lanes that we have and so on. And also Nemanos. This is something that I did not mention. We are now investing a lot on the part of Nemanos connecting Konos and the Baltic Sea in order to be able to use it for transport and also for tourism. According to the cal calculations that at least I have, it is two times cheaper 
to use Namunas to bring your cargo from the port to Konas than by road. So we'll see how it works, but we need to prepare the river in order to be able to provide transportation sector, uh, transportation service, uh, services over the, the entire, entire season. Now, regarding eco-friendly environments. So here, everything is about electric mobility and alternative fuels. And these are the numbers. Some of them are already set into different legislative acts. So we would like to increase the number of electric cars 10 times on what we have at the moment. This is a very ambitious goal, but I think we will unavoidably reach it. According, according to the data that's, that, that we have, uh, it is forecasted that the price of traditional cars and electric cars will become the same in 25 or 26. So uh, the sector will move to that direction in any case without incentives, without any additional incentives. But at the same time, we fully understand that at the moment, the state needs to provide certain incentives to move to electric mobility. There are also goals about, uh, about public transport, how to transform it. And by 24, 30% of public road passenger transport should be using fuel only from renewable energy sources, not only electri electricity, but, but also some intermediary, intermediary technologies. Then by 29, 80% uh, trains. Uh, so basically we're moving to that direction. Uh, I also mentioned about, about cars, that we need to decrease the number of trips by personal cars within cities and so on. Probably what I could highlight here is that we are focusing a lot of our, on our railways. And by 25, we will have, we will enter, uh, we will enter a new era, I would say, in the railway sector, because we will have brand new trains of, absolutely different class for people to travel, all electrified or using batteries, which is an innovate, innovation in Europe at the moment. And finally, a little bit about high returns. So we are working a lot with, with our state enterprises. We need to change the legal forms from state enterprises to public limited liability companies. We need to, uh, to reform five of them in the ministry's portfolio. Of course, our port is very important. We are focusing on deepening and expanding it to the South, to new territories. We're working on one ticket for traveling, how to increase the attractiveness of our public transport. One way is to use one ticket for train, buses, even for car sharing services. We want to create a sandbox regime in Lithuania with a certain agency responsible for promoting innovations innovations in the transport sector. Also a lot is going on about uh, autonomous vehicles and also about drones, how regulate the lower airspace in order for companies to be able to provide services. So we uh, have certain projects with our uh, different municipalities. And I think quite soon you will see some innovative solutions. So we would like to move quite fast here, but probably how I would like to conclude that within the ministry, we have recently established a brand new department 
which we call the Future Mobility Policy Group. So this is something really new within the structure of the ministry. It's not five or so people, it's around 20 people. It's its entire department, which is focusing and going to be focused on three areas, innovations in the transport sector, which is extremely, extremely important. Then everything related to environment and telecommunications. So connectivity in this area, because it's also related to, to innovations. So we are increasing our strength in this area for one simple reason, to increase returns from the sector to everyone working in the sector and at the same time to the state. So now I will conclude here. Thank you very much. It's quite uh, impressive uh, plans you, you have for, for the future. So now we have been talking about roads, about uh, airports, planes, uh, and, and railway, but we must not forget that we have also uh, boat freight. And uh, how to say, I'm from Norway, we have a lot of harbors. Uh, in Lithuania, it's a little bit more limited. So you have the main harbor in, in Klaipeda. So as I know, there is a couple of, of uh, companies that is producing uh, large oversized uh, components that they are, how to say, exporting out to, to, uh, to customers all around the world. So there is uh, two questions. What kind of specific plans does the government have to uh, increase uh, the business in, uh, in Klaipeda Harbor uh, and, and the spin off then, of course, for the rest of Lithuania? And the other thing is uh, due to um, facilitate that there will be land plots for those companies that have such kind of uh, large components industry near the sea. As I understand, when I was uh, going to, to NIDA, I saw some huge vehicles with some huge um, components that was uh, driving through, through Centrum. And the main thing I was thinking then is that, uh, well, this must cost a lot and also, uh, it's uh, how to say quite uh, limited space and so on. So what kind of um, plans does the government have in general for Clay the Harbor and also for such kind of companies that is uh, needed, how to say special space and, uh, and transport that they don't need to go through the, the city. So you mentioned a very good point that we are working with at the moment. And this is important, not only about uh, from the point of view of investment climate in Lithuania and so on, it, it's also very important for diversifica diversification of activities within the port. Because now we are basically only working with cargo, although we have a very large company, which is the largest engineering company in Lithuania building ships. So this is something that we are very proud about in Lithuania. So at the moment, the port anticipated certain territories for such companies. Uh, and especially when we are foreseeing our plans uh, or, of building a wind farm within the Baltic Sea. So of course, we would like uh, some companies to come to Lithuania and to, I don't know, assemble uh, windmills that needs, needs to be tr transported later and so on within the Klaipeda, Klaipeda Harbor. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, the port has certain foreseen territories, but at the same time, a US, US company, by the way, is not at the moment working on the southern part of the port, so we are going to expand the port to around 80 hectares territory. So I think all the companies interested in it will have sufficient, sufficient space, mm -hmm. hopefully. So this is uh, in general, from very broad, broad point of view, what, what we are doing within the port. Mm -hmm. the besides, law... besides deepening in order to be able uh, to give access to all kinds of ships that are arriving to the Baltic Sea. Hmm. Thank you. 
And my last uh, question, uh, just to follow up what we said regarding road taxes for uh, the, the trucking industry. You was mentioning that uh, you would like to have a more eco-friendly uh, transport sector, not only private, but also within in the business. And with so much trucks driving uh, through Lithuania, the, the footprint uh, is, is quite high. So specifically, are you planning to have a general uh, road tax for, for all trucks or only for those oldest? So that how to say you, you um, ensure that uh, the companies will invest in more eco-friendly uh, uh, trucks for, for the future. So I, I think, think there, there will be a certain diverse uh, differentiation. Hmm. I don't know, maybe we will move to LNG or hydrogen or something. So I think this is the interest of the state to create certain incentives. So we are still in the process of discussing, but we are building infrastructure. Hmm. will be based on mobile phones. Uh, we are building something really brand new without, without those, you know, as in other, some other countries with gates where you need to stop, when you need to pay. So everything will be with GPS signals, your mobile phones and so on. So we are working still on that, on, on the direction we will see. So there will be, there will have to be a certain basic level of taxation because it needs to compensate for, for the damage on the roads that, that trucks and basically all the transport create. But at the same time, I think unavoidable, we will have a differentiation, a differentiated regime for, to promote mm. the use of more eco-friendly transport. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. Is there any one of the participants that have any questions? Uh, if not, I think we... Uh... Bjarne? Bjarne? Yes. The, uh, the, this is John Mapset. Hello. Hi, 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 Bjarne. Hi. Uh, do I have to ask it via you or can I ask it directly to Marius? You can uh, ask directly, you're welcome. Hi, hi Marius. Uh, nice to see you. Nice to hear you. Uh, congratulations again on uh, on your fantastic achievement to 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 become minister in two in, in two consecutive uh, governments. Wonderful, wonderful. It says it says a lot about your 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 talent and your abilities. Listen, I I haven't I I sent an answer, a question, but I I joined a little bit late, so I I'm not sure if it was answered. It's a, it's a, it's slightly outside your your field, I think. But it's it's on technology and it's on a topic that that interests uh, Lithuania, I think. It's about recycling, and it's basically to have your help to know who we shall contact with this recycling uh, topic. Um, I know that Lithuanians are in general proud of uh, how much they recycle of uh, bottles and cans uh, through them through the recycling machines at the, at the supermarkets, with good reason because I think they achieve more than ninety percent, more or less, from day one. <clears throat> but we have uh, we are a Norwegian uh, um, uh, team, and we have. We have uh, something in Norway that we call pump the lotteria. It's uh, it's something that you can push a button on the on the machine on the Tamra machine, uh, uh, and and then uh, the money uh, either you win uh, a million Norwegian kroner, which it is, which is equivalent to to hundred thousand euros or some small amount small amounts, but but a lot of people you win. A lot, and uh, that all the profit goes uh, to in Norway. It goes to Red Cross in Finland. It goes to save the children in in Germany. Germany. It goes to 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 hearts for children. I mean, heart surgery for children. This this is something we would like to also do. We call it recycling lottery international. We would like to to establish this also in. 
Lithuania because it helps recycling and it helps uh, some charity organization. And you can even you can even suggest which charity you 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 would you would recommend. But tell me, which ministry should we talk to? Initially, when I heard your question, I thought about the Minister of Environment. So I think, and this is the right ministry to talk with. So you could probably invite. But, 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 but Marius, you have to keep in mind, we need a lottery license to operate such a, such a, such lottery, a... Lottery license, it will be the Ministry of Finance. Mr. Is Minister of Finance, okay. Yeah, they are responsible okay. for lotteries. But this is something, uh, so probably you could you could invite first of all my my colleague from the Minister of Environment, Simonas Gentilas, to give you a presentation what he's planning planning to do, okay, with, uh, with uh, some specific specific focus on recycling. Yeah. yeah, and then probably for for the licensed Ministry of Finance, I'm not sure to what extent the Minister of Economy could be involved here. But probably the minister, minister of environment and minister of finance for the okay. life. I will, I will give you a call the next time I'm in uh, in town, and uh, I hope soon that uh, double vaccinated can visit uh, Vilnius without uh, quarantine, uh, and then I will be there on the day when it's possible. Okay. 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 <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Okay, then uh, one hour is spent as a grim. So uh, on behalf of the Norwegian Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce and the British Chamber of Commerce, I would like to thank you, uh, dear minister, for uh, your uh, very good presentation. And uh, thanks to all participants in this event. This event is recorded and it will be put it out on the Norwegian Chamber's Facebook page, as well as the British Chamber uh, uh, page. So have a nice uh, day and thank you for participating. So thank you once again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.